Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's logic lesson, we will be learning about the law of simplification, law of conjunction, law of addition, and the chain rule. To get started, let's look at the do now with the following three statements. If Janet will go to college, then she will get a summer job. If Janet goes to the beach, then she will not get a summer job. Janet will go to college and medical school. What will Janet do? Will she go to the beach? So what is the best approach to solve this logic problem? Well, first, we want to convert each statement into symbols or letters, and then use the laws of logic that we have learned so far to somehow come up with a conclusion. So let's try this. So first, we can let C be the statement, Janet will go to college. Then S be the statement, Janet will get a summer job. Let B be the statement, Janet goes to the beach. And let M be the statement, Janet goes to medical school. Notice that I arbitrarily picked C, S, B, and M. But you can actually choose any letter you would like, such as P, Q, or S, or even symbols if you would like. But I highly recommend not to use symbols, but to use letters instead that resemble the statement. For example, in this case, capital C for college, capital S for summer job, capital B for the beach, and capital M for medical school. So the next thing you want to do now is to write all the given premises that are true. In this case, we have three premises and they're all true. So let's rewrite these premises symbolically. So the first given states that if Janet will go to college, then she will get a summer job. So what type of logic statement is that? Well, it's definitely a conditional statement, an if-then statement. So we can rewrite it as follows. If C, then S, okay? If Janet goes to college, then she'll get a summer job. The second statement states, if Janet goes to the beach, so that's a B, then she will not get a summer job. So now we have to negate that, and we're still dealing with a conditional statement. So in this case, we have if B, then not S. The last statement states that Janet will go to college and medical school. So now we have a conjunction between C and M. Okay, so now we somehow want to figure out what is Janet going to do? Will she go to the beach or not? And how are we going to do this? Well, we somehow have to introduce new laws. And that's today's lesson all about, okay? So this do now is here on purpose to introduce new laws that we can somehow apply in conjunction with the do now to solve it. So let's, for example, take the third statement. Jenny will go to college and medical school. So let me rewrite this as college and medical school, okay? So what do we know about this premise? Well, we know that this premise is indeed true. So let me actually use a different color so I can annotate this as true. So we know that this entire statement is true. Okay, so what can we say about each conjunct? Basically, the question is, is this true or false? If this true or false? Okay, so here's the truth table. So what do you notice here? When is the conjunction true? So as you can see from the table, the only time a conjunction is true, which is the first row here, is when both conjuncts are true. So therefore, the C has to be true and M has to be true, okay? So what does that mean? That Janet will go to college. That is true. And Janet is actually also going to medical school. And that is true as well. So how can we use this? Well, we can do the following. We know that in this case, C and M is true. Therefore, what can we conclude? 
that C is true, correct? Or in a similar manner, we know that C and M is true. Therefore, M has to be true. So what I've just introduced here is a new law of logic. And this law is called the law of simplification. It's basically saying that if you have a conjunction P and Q, it must also be true that P itself is true, or it must be true that Q itself is true, that both conjuncts are true. So how can we apply the law of simplification in solving the do now? So let's go back here. So here we know that M is true, correct? And we know that C is true. So if you look at the givens here, uh, we can, for example, isolate the C by itself, and we can look at the first given, because now we know that the first given is a premise, which is true, and we know C by itself is true. And we can now combine these with a law that we learned in the previous video called modus ponens. So let me write this out. So here we have if C then S from the given, and then we knew that C must be true, by the law of simplification, because Janet goes to college and medical school. Therefore, we can conclude that S must be true. And that is actually by modus ponens. Okay, or you can call it the law of detachment. So what can we say here now? We can say that Janet is going to summer school. We can now say for sure that Janet is getting a summer job. Okay, how do we answer if she's going to the beach or not? Well, let's look at the other given here. So let me erase this because we use the first given and this, the third given. So if you look at the second given, let's write this down, if B then not S, okay? So we're gonna write if B then not S. S, okay? However, we know that S must be true. So we can actually put that here. So we know that S is true as well. Therefore, what can we conclude here? Well, in this case, we can conclude that not B must be true. And the reason is because of modus tollens, okay? Now, just as a reminder, what is modus tollens? We actually did this last time. Imagine you have if P then Q, you're negating the Q, therefore not P has to be true, okay? But in this case, we're actually negating the negation of S, okay? What happens here? Negation B is true as well. So you can think of it this way. If Janet goes to the beach, she, then she's not getting a summer job. However, she is getting a summer job. Is she going to the beach? Therefore, no, she's not going to the beach, okay? So the answer here, we can state that, number one, Janet is going to college. Number two, Janet is going to medical school. Number three, Janet is getting a summer job. And fourth, Janet is not going to the beach. So that's basically what we can conclude from the do now. Okay, so far we have learned the law of simplification for logical statements as a new rule. Now, the question is, is there something similar for disjunctive, where you use disjunction? As a matter of fact, there is. So let's say your premise is just P, okay? Is there anything you can conclude from this? It seems strange, right, to conclude anything from one given statement, from a premise. But the truth is that you can conclude that P has to be true or Q has to be true. But how does this even work? And again, if you look at the truth table, when is a disjunction true? Well, you can see it right here. Let me highlight it. 
So we have this case, this case, and this case, okay? Now, if you look at the given premise here, and again, I'm going to use a different color here, we know that P is true, correct? So here we know that P is true. Question, does it matter what Q is? So in this case, we're actually dealing with the first two cases here, okay? So let me erase the third highlighted row. So if you think about this, if P is true in both case, and the disjunction is true, does it matter what Q is? The reality, it doesn't matter. It could either be true or false, okay? So this means that it must also be true that if Q is true, then what can you conclude? That P or Q is true, okay? So again, this goes for both cases. Again, this is true. So in this case, we're actually dealing with the following here. So let me erase this. We have Q is true. We're dealing with the first and third row in which both cases, the disjunction is true. But again, does it matter what P is? No, it does not matter, okay? So this is true, but P could be either true or false. It doesn't matter that this junction is still true. So this is actually a new law here. And since we're dealing with this junction, and since we're adding something to the disjunction, we'll just call it the law of disjunctive addition. So let me give you an example now. So let's write this here, example. Let me write this in black. Let's say that P is true. So that's your true premise. And let's say that Q is true, okay? Now, what can you conclude from these two premises? Well, which logical statement will still make both premises true? Well, it turns out that P and Q must be true as well, okay? And again, if you look at the statement reason table, the only time a conjunction is true is when both conjuncts are true. And since we're dealing with conjunction, this law is also referred as the law of conjunction. Okay. So let's go back to the do now really quick uh, to introduce the last law of this video. If you look at the givens, we're given that if C then S, but we're also given if B then not S, okay? Now, there's a way to prove the statement that Janet is not going to the beach using a different route, a different way, okay? So how about this? Let me first write down the givens and then I'll show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so here are the givens. Now, if you just look at if B, then not S, there's something we can conclude here, okay? And we learned this in one of the previous videos that by the law of contrapositives, then if S, then not B, must be true okay so let me write this this is called the law of contrapositives okay okay so that means that this statement here is true okay so how can we combine this statement with the first given here so that means that if c then s is true and we have if s then not B must be true, okay? So basically what I did, I took the first given and basically the contrapositive of the second given and combined them here, okay? So we know that both of these must be true. So what is something we can conclude here? So let's think about logically. If C then S, if S then not B, therefore, what do you think we can conclude here? that if C, then not B must be true, okay? So since this kind of looks like a chain, that means that this is called the chain rule, okay? So basically the chain rule states the following. Let's say you have if P then Q, if Q then R, 
even let's say you have if r then s you can go uh, indefinitely therefore if p then s must be true okay because it's kind of like a chain here these two connect and these two connect and so on and so on so again, the chain rule states that if P then Q, if Q then R, therefore if P then R. So let's summarize today's lesson with all the laws that we have learned. So in today's lesson, we learned the following four laws, the law of simplification, the law of disjunctive addition, the law of conjunction, and the chain rule. So we're basically finished now introducing all the laws of logic. So basically, there are 10 laws. Uh, these laws are called laws of inference, uh, which I refer as law of logic in these videos, but it's actually the same thing. Again, the 10 laws are the law of detachment or modus ponens, the law of contrapositive, the law of modus tollens, then the chain rule, the law of disjunctive inference. Then we have a law of double negation. I didn't really uh, do a lesson on that, but it's uh, very intuitive that if you negate a statement twice, then it will become the original statement. It's kind of like having two negative signs that becomes positive again. Uh, then we talked about the De Morgan's law, law of simplification, law of conjunction, and finally the law of disjunctive addition. Okay, so now that we have all these laws, uh, we will be using these laws to prove logical statements in the next coming lessons, okay? so. I would encourage you to please subscribe to my YouTube video so you can get an alert on when the next video is coming out. Uh, they're a lot of fun. But otherwise, uh, please hit the like button and uh, otherwise, have a great day.